Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Caesarea Eusebia, which isn't relevant at all to our history, but is the town that I need to upgrade the city to increase public order. Once again, I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and history. And we have got a new turn, a new batch of money, though we've spent a whole lot of it to upgrade this city. We also need to upgrade... Oh, we really need to upgrade Ansira, because it's only level 1. We could upgrade one of these towns to level 2. Food is doing great, although that might be just because of the season. It is autumn. So, the food goes down, obviously, in the winter. The islands have gained some population. So we could do something here. I was thinking perhaps a wheat field to take advantage of the fertility. Let's do that, actually. I feel kind of weird about having two farms in one city. Like, you really want to diversify a bit more. And maybe I will in the future. Like, maybe I'll get rid of the sheep. Because you really want sheep in places where there's less fertility. And I already have a fishing wharf, or fishing jetties, as well. Basically, this whole region is producing the majority of our food. And that's okay, except some towns want to have their own food surplus locally. Like, for example, Thracia, even though there's plenty of food, they're unhappy because there's not enough food that they're producing on their own. Actually, what I really want is some more population in Thracia so that I could build a gold mine and take advantage of that. Actually, I don't need that. All I need is some more money. It's actually in Tremontium. Actually, I'm going to build a goldsmith instead. That's the one that requires gemstones, right? Yeah. Because it's better than a gold mine. And we have gemstones. I know we have gemstones. I don't know if you need two gemstones to support two goldsmiths, since we have the goldsmith down in Egypt. That's something I honestly don't know. Alright, so everyone looks like they're in good shape, except for Cilicia. And that'll be fixed in five turns as we build this thing. But it might not be soon enough. Hmm. Well, this gentleman passing through will probably raise the morale here a bit. Yes? No? Maybe so? Hey, he did for a little bit. He did buy two, but now he's out of the region. So, I don't know, man. Five turns at negative five each is going to put us in a bad place. They're neutral here. They are growing slightly here now. Let's move him back here. These priests are pretty necessary, let me tell you. Okay. How are things here? Getting better, still, at a rate of 7. Ready for orders. We'll move him up here. On the move. I'm staying on the coast to avoid attrition. These guys are still here, despite the fact they are supposedly taking attrition. I'm not sure what exactly to do about them. And I don't really want to build a navy here just yet. All right. Ah, our navy. Excellent. Let us see what Ajax is doing. All right, it's telling us that we can't defeat them. I guess that makes sense. They have a garrison, but we can blockade them. Well, do we even have to do that? Let's just do it for a turn, just to be jerks. The, the Western Romans do have some fleets here, so that's useful. We're moving this gentleman down. Where are the Illyrians? There they are. So they're coming around up north in Italy. I'm curious to see what they're up to. We're just going to have him run around. 
And in next turn, we will be positive happiness in Syracuse. That's great. Sanitation's good, but we could improve this just to get some more public order. And it's cheap, why not? Carthage is still under attack by these folks. Rufinus is staying where he is. The Emperor, our maimed Emperor. We're going to head back up. And this time, the city will be ours. No. This time, the city will be ours. All right, and we are going to occupy it. You have further orders? So this will be our bastion against our enemies here. Although it looks like the Huns are all over the place, and they're currently raiding. Although they were raiding against these Germans, they don't know that we took the place. So they have two fairly large armies, mostly cavalry. I'm confident that we can defeat the Huns in a city battle. It's um in the field, obviously, where they're more difficult. And Apulum actually is does exist. It's owned by the Gruthungians. We might want to take that. I don't know. So right now, our city of Sirmium is under attack by the Ostrogoths. I actually didn't notice that. And they used to be really happy, but now, obviously, they're very unhappy. We probably should move Arcadius down there. I'm... That was bad of me not to notice that. What should I do with our legacy? Versus Eastern Empires versus the Huns. Where do we get versus the Huns? Here we go. So we have to go kind of down this path. But we're not going to be fighting the Huns just yet, hopefully. Integrity in foreign territory, that's pretty good too. Public order is always good. Let's get... the um, integrity up, and the morale versus eastern empires. I'm going to keep this army in the west, so I'm only going to do this once because I have to to get morale against the Huns, which kind of sucks. I wish they would allow you to choose one or the other instead of making you go through these two first to get to this one. But that's what the game does. So we're going to sit here for a turn just to make sure this place gets safe, and then we'll head on over to Sirmium. Yeah, these guys aren't really capable of doing much to any of my cities currently. I feel like the game's getting a lot more complicated now in the later stages. I have less time to talk about history because I'm moving around so many guys. Maybe I'll find a way around that. Like, not move around as much on camera. I'm not sure. How can I serve the people of Rome? Okay, so we're at peace with a bunch of people. I think we're good. Athenus's father died in 420. And in kind of a dick move, he left the entire estate to her two brothers. And left her only 100 coins. Now she felt this was unfair, but he left her with the cryptic message... Sufficient for her is her destiny, which will be the greatest of any woman. She, however, wanted a bit more money, so she asked her brothers to give her a bit more of the estate. However, apparently all the family was a bunch of jerks because they said no, and they didn't give her anything. So at this point, since she had next to nothing and her brothers refused to help her, she went to live with her aunt. And her aunt encouraged her to go to Constantinople to appeal to the emperor to get justice for herself and fairness in the family situation. And our other son died. So we're just not doing a good job keeping our sons alive. That's a problem. I just want to check and see how we're doing with the Huns. 
Unfriendly but improving. I want it to stay that way. We will speak together of whatever you wish, but bring words that can warm our hearts. And they're pretty cheap to make happy. So we'll do that. Now the Persians, the Persians are a lot more expensive, I guess. That's the word I'm looking for. They are neutral and improving of us, however. We do have a non-aggression pact. I guess we could try again to get a trade offer. Now, friend, speak plainly, so that we may fall to haggling. Give him a thousand. Oh wow, goes up from nine ninety to sixteen hundred. Still low likelihood. What would a gift cost? Two thousand? Eh. Such a tribute will be welcome. It's worth it just to keep him off our back for another couple turns, since we have things going on. Okay, we're suffering attrition, and apparently they left Sirmium alone. They're gone now. Interesting. How's this place looking? We'll convert that. I guess we have to dismantle the farmstead. We cannot convert it. But we can convert the Sacred Grove to... Nah, get rid of that. And we have iron! That's good. Actually, I'm very happy about that. We should work hard to keep this place under control. Flavia Felix doesn't have to be in Marcianopolis anymore. We can get down to Constantinople and recruit some more men. You are going to put on your happy face. Okay, good. And you are going to give your cavalry to this gentleman here. Okay, he has 16, so let's go 17, 18. Do we have any promoti? No, we just have Dalmate. Oops. Alright, so two units of Dalmate, two units of Cataphracts. And we're going to move you back home. So now we have a full 20 here with some Cataphracts, finally. This is a pretty good anti-Persian army. We might want to get rid of the Slingers and instead recruit more infantry, though. I don't know. We'll keep it as it is for right now. To your duties, men. We hunger for battle. Okay, what are we going to do with Rufinus? Wow, the Rebels, they have tons of little armies here. The problem with Rufinus is he's just not strong enough to do what I need him to do as far as raiding is concerned. So I'm going to move down to Syracuse and get him some more ships. We will return. Oh yes, we will. To avoid casualties, let's try to stay close to the coast. And not get in the deep water. Okay. Arcadius. Well, since Sirmium is not under attack anymore, we'll have him sit here for right now. This fellow, however, is going to continue his journey north. And we're still doing fine here. We'll do even better in a couple turns when these upgrade. Which leaves us this fellow. And now so that what I want him to do is embark into the ocean. I guess you need a town for that. That belongs to you. So I guess we'll have to walk all the way down to Syracuse. That's kind of a pain. But it is what it is. And this guy who's just... Hanging out, earning experience, garrisoning the city. Alright. Ooh, a skill. Governor. Alright. 
So he's maxed out everything. Well, he hasn't maxed out his authority. But what is useful for a governor here? This is mostly for commanders. This has gives you authority, cunning, and zeal. And growth to the province. But all the rest of this stuff we don't really want or need. This we could use. That's food and construction costs. So these two are valuable. This is not valuable at all. Well, morale training for naval recruits and cavalry recruits. But, nah. Morale training for infantry. He's in. This is the guy in Antioch, right? So we're going to go with replenishment and food. I guess that's the way I want to do it. Morale plus 10 when an owner allied territory. Nope. Upkeep cost for mercenary units. No. These are all for warriors. He's not married. Okay. Well, that's fine. So at this point, the story of Athenes or Ilia Eudocia takes on kind of a Disney princess Cinderella type story. And there is historical debate on whether or not the events actually happened as I'm going to be telling them. According to John Malalas, who was a Roman historian who was writing about a century after these events took place, this is what happened. And it's a cool story, so I'm going to tell it. You're going to pay us a thousand to attack the Marcomans. Where are they? They are actually close to our lands. I don't know. No. They could come and hurt us. The Emperor Theodosius II, who, as you recall, is the son of Arcadius and Ilia Eudoxia, or at least Eudoxia, we know that for a fact. At the age of 20, he decided that he should get married. So he had his sister Pulcheria and his best friend Paulinus go about and search for a bride for him. Now, just about the time that this search began, Athenes arrived in the city to plead her case for getting more money and land from her family. And we'll tell the rest of that story in just a bit. So construction has been completed all over the place. Here is where things are really bad. So let's upgrade this. Sanitation's fine. Let's just... Well, let's see. what We might need the money somewhere else, too. Ready for orders. Our agent has gained. That's great. Although none of this stuff's really useful. Call to arms. Deploy own province. It increases the recruitment capacity by one. It's not bad. Also gives him some authority. Assault unit. That seems useful. Harass army. Sabotage building. Sabotage army. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> I love this guy. Melancholic, boring, irresolute. Alright, let's finish off these East Germanics now that they've landed. And of course, they're going to flee. And of course, we cannot follow them. Oops. Our priest down here has gained a level. I don't know. What skills would he be useful for? Preach Doom. What is, does he do anything that helps our army? That's okay. Do they do anything for our own settlements, like to make them happier? They really don't. Although persuading a foreign agent, I think, will make that agent join us up. So that sounds kind of like a good idea. Let's learn that one. Otherwise, he's going to stay here and keep doing what he's doing. As will this gentleman. Rufinus is still headed back home. Oh, there's Illyrium. Or Illyria. I wish you could peacefully just incorporate them back into your empire. Not making them a puppet state, but kind of annexing them. Let's go up here, I guess. 
and we'll move around. This is taking a long time. You know what? I should be force marching. That's what I should be doing. I'm not thinking. All right. This gentleman is going to... He is going to force march. And he is going to force march back home. Okay, so... If you force march, will it also force march in the ocean? Yes, it will. Okay. Okay, that's cool, I guess. And now, for some reason, that he's in the ocean, he can retrain all of his men. Because the Mediterranean is just a Roman lake, as they say, and apparently you can retrain your men while they're on boats. Very good. I like it. So I don't think Illyria is going to try anything with us because we're currently at peace, so we should be able to make it home without too much difficulty. And that took him all of his move points for some reason. Okay, now the Picts are down here. And they're either helping the Gaetulians or fighting against them and the Romans. So we better get our army out there quickly. At your command. And you are just going to... I want hourly patrols. Ready for orders. Okay, Amida. All right, and you are here. I could recruit some more infantry, but instead I'm just going to save the money. Actually, can I build a gold mine? Or the gold smith? Public order minus five, though. That's a big deal. It'll add negative three to public order. Where does it tell me what the public order is? That's just sanitation. Oh, here we go. Nope. Public order is plus 18. I think we're going to be okay, and we could definitely use the money. So, goldsmith it is. How can I serve the people of Rome? And you are just going to... You have further orders? The governor of Asia? I did the wrong thing, though. He's not the one recruiting the cavalry, so they're not getting the experience from him. That's all right, though. We'll get more replenishment. He's respectful and bibulous. A little wine never hurt anyone. All right, so to end up this episode, as I mentioned, the emperor was looking for a bride. His sister and best friend were kind of scouting around, and Athenus arrives at the court, penniless, but with many talents. Pulcheria meets with her because she's presenting her case for getting the money from her family. Oh boy. See, now, now we're not in happy times right now. Despite the fact that I just gave them a gift, they have ended the non-aggression pact. They're actually quite unhappy with me because... Mainly because we're a great power and cultural aversion, treaties with the Western Empire. So there's really nothing that I can do to lower this. Luckily, he's 69 years old. Hopefully he'll die and he'll be replaced with somebody who doesn't hate rival empires because that's the biggest part of this. However, we are improving because of our gift and other things. So that sucks. A gentleman by the name of Kenneth G. Holm, who wrote a book in 1982 called Theodosian Empresses, stated that, and uh, I'm paraphrasing here, so this is a quote, but it might not be 100% accurate, so please forgive me, but he basically said, When Pulcheria received the girl in the palace, she was astonished at her beauty and at the intelligence and sophistication with which she presented her grievance. Assured by the two aunts that... Athenus was indeed a virgin, and moreover, that she had received an excellent classical education from her father, the empress hastened to report to her brother. She had found a young girl, a Greek maid, very beautiful, pure and dainty, eloquent as well, the daughter of a philosopher. That's the end of the quote. And in 421, on June 7th, Athenes married the Emperor Theodosius II, and she converted to Christianity, and she became then known as Ilia Eudocia. Tyrus has consumption.
Next episode, we will speak about Eudocia as she is now the Empress and what are some of the things she did when she was Empress. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.